Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here for Gibson TV, and welcome back to another episode of The Scene. Today we're in Nashville, Tennessee, just outside of downtown on 8th Avenue. Now, in a city with this many killer guitar players, there's bound to be a lot of killer guitar stores. But if it's vintage electric guitars that you desire, no one does it better than Rumble Seat Music. Let's go check them out. Let the bastards drag me down. Losers win while the winners are losing. Are you the problem or are you the solution? You cash in, you sell out. So we're here at Rumble Seat Music. I've got the owner and my good friend, Elliot Michael. Hey, Morning, man. buddy. Thanks for having us. No, thanks for coming. You've been selling guitars for a long time, but you started playing them way before that. When did when did your love affair with the guitar start? Uh, probably when I saw the Beatles and Rolling Stones on Ed Sullivan. It's that same. It's, it's that that day. That is a t that is a very iconic moment in time because you're totally. not the first person to tell me that. Right. So we're in the main showroom here. This is kind of the heart of the store here, where the majority of the inventory lives. Pretty much. Yeah. A couple side rooms and stuff. Mm -hmm. The Les Paul Junior stock is healthy. I'm gonna go. Uh, what is it about these single pickup guitars, man, that make them so great? Because you certainly seem to like them too, like I do. My view, all you need is one pickup. If you can't get it done with one pickup, you certainly can't get it done with two pickups. True. Does the majority of your inventory come in on trades or walking out the street, or you have to really go out no, looking of, for this stuff? No, most of the phone calls, people coming in, people trading, yeah. collections that I've sold before coming back. Yeah. You know, just typical, you know, just. Yeah. We don't really do, we don't run for looking for stuff. We go to guitar shows, buy stuff, trade yeah. stuff. But most of it comes through the door or phone calls or emails. Yeah. It's a, more of a rock and roll store. Yeah. That's my thing. Yeah. I'm not an acoustic guy, but we do have some acoustics. But we specialize in good quality, you know, electric guitars. Yeah. And the only dealer we've ever dealt with is you guys, Gibson. Yeah. That's the only dealer That's the I ever wanted to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Why Nashville? We would, you get to a point where, you know, you're from New York. You know, I went through the whole thing in New York, lived in London, lived in Spain, lived all over the world pretty much. So you go, we were looking at trying to figure out where we want to move to. So my wife, as a joke, said Nashville. We no. came here. You know, it's, it's different. But then we started meeting people, seeing the scene here, and it's a great place. How long have you guys had the, the store officially here in Three Nashville? years. Three years yeah. now? And over that three years, you've probably already seen a huge change oh, in man, the city yeah. just over the three years Majorly. you've been here. Majorly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jimmy Page, early Jimmy Page? It's the pre prototype. So early? Yeah. Yeah. Prototype sample. Yeah. Wow. How did you end up with this? Uh, wasn't, easy. Somebody <laughs> wasn't easy. Wasn't <laughs> easy. And how, do, how does the celebrity thing work here in Nashville? Because I, I had my fair share of celebrities in LA. And, I bet. And, and the other people in the store always freak out and the staff tries to hold it down. Is it, is it more casual here? Or? Totally. Yeah. Everybody that comes in here feels relaxed. We don't tell anybody anything. We just let them do their thing. Yeah. Nobody asks for autographs. Nobody takes pictures. We don't do that. Wrap your hand around somebody, take a picture, yeah, show it on a yeah. website. Yeah. But that's why I think that people feel very comfortable. What does it mean to you when you when you when you see an artist on stage or on a, a something and it's like, you know that guitar came through here? Yeah. It's a great feeling. Yeah. You know, I look at you know, some of the guys that live in town plays and I see them playing my guitar and I talk to them about it, and they say it's the best guitar they've ever had. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's a great feeling. Yeah. To know that you are able to hand somebody a, a tool, an instrument and they love it and play it on stage all the time. Wow. Okay, so this was made for Ronnie Wood and Ronnie Lane. Oh, okay. wow. And back inside, it's, it's signed to them. If you so take up the cool. cover. So this is probably, what, late 60s, uh, early 70s? 70s, yeah. There's a letter over here, and we have letters going back and forth from the owner to Tony, to Midas. At what point did the collecting guitar thing happened do you remember when you realized that like oh this old <coughs> this old used stuff is like really the good stuff well my mother wouldn't give me money to buy a guitar and i had to go scrape pennies together and buy like whatever kind of guitar i can afford for you know 10 bucks or something like that i'd buy it play it for a little bit then sell it for 15 bucks buy a better guitar yeah. and just keep doing it too oh man wait so just before we even get started we got what 52 gold tops 59. Based on the tuners, I'm gonna say it's probably 57. Yep. How many bursts do you think you've owned over your time in the industry? 125 to 150. You've done over 100 yep. bursts. Yeah. They're all different. Yeah. There's been some dogs, but I say 95% are great. 
Yeah. Yeah. This guitar has a pretty phenomenal top on it. It is. Um, not all of them look this flamey. A lot of them are very, very plain. Yeah. This is a really great guitar. I mean, the flame, but besides the flame, it plays great. Pickups double are killing white. double white zebras. Yeah. You know, it's the best. Do you keep a burst for yourself? Not anymore. Not anymore. You want me to tell you why? Tell me why. Because of that Gibson that Gibson made a year ago that I have the one piece top. Yeah, oh, the one piece top. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Kaler I'm special. Yeah. I'm done, man. That's the one? That's the one. You guys are doing some cool Les Pauls with the custom shop yeah. right now. Tell me about those. Basically, we did a run, I think it was pretty close to a year ago, and we spent close to a year making it. We, everything was hand done. We brought three different bursts in. We hand did it. We made sure everything was right. The picks were wired the way we wanted them. The necks are perfect. The body, I mean, they, we picked the best wood. They're the closest thing I felt that feels like a real guitar and sounds like a real 59. The people who got those wrote me back and said they're the best guitars they've ever played. That's awesome. Yeah. Gotta love to hear that kind of oh. stuff. Yeah. So this is this is the prototype of the Les Paul you're doing with the Gibson Custom Shop. Was this based off of an original, or did you guys just pick certain elements? It was based off of three different bursts. There's three different yep. guitars that this one is based on. Yeah. So what we try to do is match the color of everything from because everyone's slightly different, different in color. Yeah. So we try to get the best color to match all three of the bursts. The uh, jack plate is perfect. Did a great job on that. So we're not even talking the color of the guitar. We're talking no. the color of the plastic. We're getting down to the plastics on these things. How and important e it is. Even this, what we did at Custom Shop is we greened these to be just exactly like a 59 that had a little bit of wear. The, what they did on the nickel is amazing. The necks are perfect. And the Brazilian's killer. So these were, I'd say, probably the best Gibson's it's done in years. Is everything, is everything in here for sale? Almost. Almost? Yeah. Because I got to tell you, I'm a big sucker for custom color Marshalls, and you have, like, the most killer collection of custom color Marshall stuff. Has anybody made you offers on any of that stuff, or is that part of the stuff that's not for sale? Not for sale. <laughs> not for, no. When did it start for you with the Marshalls? Well, a friend of mine in Italy who had a whole collection. So I went over to Italy and bought his whole collection. But unfortunately, people coming in, friends, going, hey, I want that one, I want this one. So I sold off some of the stuff. No. Which I kind of regret now, so that's why these aren't for sale. The color, the color ones are not for sale. Black stuff might be for sale. The uh, colors, maybe, yeah, maybe. Depends on how good it's yeah. on. Yeah. Was there a certain color you were going after? Did you just light up when you mm. saw any color? No, I just love colors. Yeah. I mean, same thing as you. Custom just, color strats and... Exactly. Custom, yeah, yeah, custom color anything. Especially Marshalls. And do the colors have their own rarity associated? Like on, like if you're like strats or tellies, like the Fiesta reds and Sonic yeah. blues and stuff are more yeah. valuable than other ones. Reds and orange. Reds and orange are probably And the, whites. And what is this? Is that a blues oh, breaker? Okay. Like, what's this, the combo? All right, so this, this came from Ronnie Lane's studio. This was used in Fleetwood Mac on oh, all wow. the early, you know, Peter Green stuff. This is the amp, and here's the letter from the lawyers who dealt with uh, Fleetwood Mac back then. So, you know, Sunburst Les Paul into this guy and... Peter Green. Rock and roll history. They're killer, yeah. killer. Man, more Marshalls, any more colors in here? Um, oh, seafoam green. Let's see what we got here. That, we got the fawn. The full fawn stack? Yep. Oh, dude. And then there's another room too, is that? Oh, that must be the Vox. That's the Vox. That's the Beetle room? That's the Beetle room. room and the Gibson amp room. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. So we have Beetle, fan, huh? Beetle stuff over here. So and then, these are, we got Super Beatles, or we got oh, uh, man, Kensington's, uh, not even sure. And the Hoffners. Hoffner bases, a couple of Gibsons over here. The leather, leather and stuff. What do you think of the Gibson amps? I think they're great. They're cool. You, just, you, you always see Fenders and Marshalls and in boxes and everything. But right. There's some really cool Gibson amps out there. These are two of my favorite amps. These two and the new park. Yeah. My favorite amps in this room. Right. Yeah, the, the GA40 sound amazing. So these <laughs> these are all cases. Some some are full. Some are you know cases for out there. There are some things that have stuff in them yeah, as well. Yeah, some of the rows here. Yeah, have guitars on. Anything cool that we need to see in any of these cases that uh, you can think of? This just came in today. This is from the original owner. Ugh, play uh, dots. Sixty-two. Scotty logo. P bass. Post lab still slam. Post lab. Uh, post lab. Laminate. But it's great. It's a picture of a girl playing it. The original owner. Oh, gotta love it. Yeah. How how important is the historical documentation of the guitar when selling 
the big dollar stuff. I think it's great. It just yeah. adds to the whole thing. The history is what makes these things what they are. So having a picture or a letter or buying it from the original owner. Yeah. Being a guitar shop owner and all the talk of the guitar is dead and music with guitar playing is dead and all that stuff. How do you feel about the future? Are you confident, looking forward about guitars and guitar playing? 1,000%. The guys that work for me, 20s, they're just as much into it as you or I are. Mm. I mean, they, I'm seeing young guys coming out playing guitar, like killer, that love vintage guitars. In a lifetime, it's going to be strong. Yeah, it's I think not it's even anywhere. getting stronger. I have the same feeling. Man. Yeah. I don't think they I don't think we've hit the the peak of where this thing can go no. yet. I yeah. think they're all around. Elliot, I want to thank you for sitting no, down with us today. Thank you, pleasure, man. man. Always good to hang. You always got killer, killer stuff, and that's what it's all about, man. Thanks thank for having you. us out. Thank you. see their full inventory of guitars, including the new Gibson Custom Shop RSM 59 Les Pauls, head over to rumbleseatmusic.com. That's all for me. I'm Mark Agnesi. We'll see you guys next time at another iconic music destination on another episode of The Scene. Peace.